I'm Tisha Bader with Shalom TV's news update for Thursday, August the 29th, 2013. Israeli President Shimon Peres is weighing in on the crisis in Syria and threats from Syria against Israel should the U.S. intervene militarily in the country. Peres said today Israel is not and has not been involved in the civil war in Syria, but if they try to hurt us, we will respond with full force. The president dismissed violent political rhetoric directed against Israel, saying that such statements were intended to create panic. He said Israel is experienced enough in these situations so as not to be drawn into false propaganda. Paris also called the alleged use of chemical weapons last week by Syrian President Bashar Assad against his own people a crime against humanity and international law, saying it is because of that horror that the responsible world wishes to respond. Paris said this time the response must be global rather than local. Meanwhile, U.S. President Barack Obama said yesterday that he has not yet made a decision on intervention in Syria, though he did stress the need to deter the use of chemical weapons. The president made the comments during a PBS NewsHour interview where he also said that the U.S. had concluded that President Assad was behind the chemical attack last week that killed hundreds of Syrian civilians. We have concluded that uh, the Syrian government, in fact, carry these out. And if that's so, then there need to be international consequences. So we are consulting with our allies. We're consulting with the international community. Uh, and you know, I have no interest in any kind of open-ended conflict in Syria. But we do have to make sure that when uh, countries break international norms on weapons like chemical weapons that could threaten us, that they are held accountable. And Israel's Army Radio reported today that the IDF Home Front Command has extended the opening hours for gas mask distribution centers in Israel to deal with the increased demand for gas masks by the Israeli public in the last few days due to the threats of a counterstrike by Syria against Israel should the U.S. intervene. Israelis lined up at distribution centers across the country waiting for hours in an effort to obtain the masks. General Gabi Ophir, who is the former director general of the Home Front Defense Ministry, told Army Radio that the number of gas masks in Israel today is not sufficient. But he added that the kits are just a small link in the chain of preparedness of the state of Israel. According to Home Front Command figures, as of this week, only 60 percent of Israelis are in possession of gas masks. And while Israeli officials continue to assess that a possible counterstrike against Israel from Syria is low, the IDF continues to prepare for such a scenario. IDF soldiers deployed along the borders with Syria and Lebanon were told to stay in their bases until the IDF's Operations Division holds a situation assessment in which it'll be decided whether to cancel leaves home. A limited call-up of reserve soldiers is also underway. About 1,000 soldiers serving in the Intelligent Corps, the Home Front Command, and the Air Force's air defense units have been mobilized. Nigeria has charged two of its citizens in assisting an Iranian militant cell in planning possible attacks against Israeli targets. Nigerian authorities had arrested Abdullahi Mustafa Barende and Sahid Oluremi Adewumi, plus one other Nigerian back in February of this year. Barende is accused of traveling to Iran to help with material assistance and terrorist training in the use of firearms, explosives, and other weapons. He's also accused of knowing about spying going on on two Israeli targets in Lagos, among them the Chabad Lubavitch Jewish Center, but failing to report it to the police. He and Adewumi were both accused of aiding a high-profile Iranian terrorist group, which was not named during the charges. The head of the Jewish Federation in Vancouver and the Canadian city's transit agency are debating the legality of an anti-Israel ad campaign currently running on buses there. Posters of the ad campaign sponsored by the Palestine Awareness Coalition went up on buses earlier this week. They show versions of maps of Israel that claim and illustrate a, quote, disappearance of Palestine due to Israeli occupation. Mitchell Gropper, who's chair of the Jewish Federation of Greater Vancouver, told the province newspaper that the ads were very worrisome. He said this is of grave concern to our community at large because the ads make the use of the buses unwelcome and unsafe. Canadian transit agency TransLink said they were obligated to run the ads. 
The Friends of the Simon Wiesenthal Center in Toronto said it was disturbed to learn about TransLink's agreement to run historically distorted anti-Israel advertisements and said the ads were provocative and incite hatred and contempt. And a group of Jews on Long Island is fighting to have an A-roof built after a zoning board rejected their request. The East End A-roof Association filed a suit in Brooklyn District Court this week against the township of Southampton and the Southampton Zoning Board of Appeals. Last month, the zoning board denied the construction of the A-roof, which is usually a wire that is strung to serve as a symbolic boundary or enclosure that allows observant Jews to carry items or push strollers outdoors on the Sabbath. The New York Post reported that the association alleges that the zoning board's rejection of the A-roof is tantamount to discrimination and accuses the board of being, quote, motivated by discriminatory intentions and animus towards observant Jews. The zoning board said the A-roof, which in this case is made up of PVC poles on 15 of Southampton Township's telephone poles, would, quote, alter the essential character of the neighborhood. The board also took issue with the concept of the A-roof itself, calling it a, quote, loophole, and suggesting that it is motivated by the personal desire to be freed from the prescriptions of Jewish law. Masa Israel Journey and the Israel Action Network announced the launching of a new fellowship yesterday. The Masa Israel Action Network Fellowship will be made up of alumni of Masa Israel programs. They will gain insight about the state of Israel advocacy in the U.S. and receive tools to help them counter the assault on Israel's legitimacy in their communities. Masa Israel Journey is a joint project of the Government of Israel, the Jewish Agency for Israel and its partners, the Jewish Federations of North America, and Karen Hayesod UIA. They approached the Israel Action Network, which is a strategic project of the Jewish Federations of North America, in partnership with the Jewish Council for Public Affairs about the initiative. Avi Rubel, executive director of Massa in North America, said, Our alumni return from their experiences in Israel hungry to do more and support Israel in any way they can. He said we wanted to provide an opportunity to help them channel their passion for and personal relationship with Israel into meaningful, productive action. The fellows will support the Israel Action Network's mission of countering the threats of delegitimization against Israel while applying the knowledge and perspective they gained while participating in their five to ten month Israel program through Massa. The fellows will also work with their community's Jewish Federation Community Relations Council, as well as other groups, to help with Israel advocacy focused programs. Jerry Palast, managing director of Israel Action Network, called the partnership a win win for young people and for the community as a whole. And finally today, for the fourth consecutive year, Shalom TV will be televising high holiday services on the Shalom TV channel, as well as online at shalomtv.com, so that anyone can participate in the Jewish high holidays anywhere in the world. The services will be televised live from Central Synagogue in New York City on both Rosh Hashanah, September the 4th through the 6th, and on Yom Kippur, September the 13th and 14th. And that's Shalom TV's news update for Thursday, August the 29th, 2013. I'm Tisha Bader. I will be back after the Labor Day holiday weekend on Tuesday, September the 3rd. <laughs>